Deb. How are you this morning? I am doing great, Amy. It's so wonderful to see you across the country. I know. It's wonderful to see you from coast to coast here. And thank you for joining me for coffee this morning. And uh, afternoon where you are, almost afternoon. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's really great that you're doing this. It's, it's important at this moment when we're all physically distant and so much is going on in the world to just be reminded we're part of this larger community of people who are here to make the world a better place. It's a lovely sentiment to start off our conversation. And um, so I look forward to jumping in and, and chatting with you about what you've been up to. I, first of all, I want to congratulate you. You are now the Nature Conservancy State Director for Massachusetts. And I apologize, but I want to read from my notes here because you have had a very illustrious career and I want to make sure I touch on some a of the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have had more than 25 years experience leading large agencies and nonprofit organizations to advance climate solutions, environmental protection, and economic and social justice. You were elected Vermont Secretary of State six times, and then you served as Secretary of the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, where your work focused on climate change, forest health, and water quality. You also have served on the boards of the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, REGI, the Transportation Climate Initiative, and represented Vermont on the White House Task Force on Climate Preparedness and Resilience, and at the UNFCCC COP21 in Paris, COP22 in Marrakesh. And uh, you were also <laughs> board member at the Climate Registry, which is how I know you. So that's you, right. Yeah. So you've come out of a long career in public service. What brought you to the Nature Conservancy at this point in your career? Well, after leaving government, um, you know, I was looking for an opportunity to lead on climate change. This is the biggest challenge facing the world. It, it's the, you know, it, it exacerbates all other problems. Like right now we're looking at, you know, racial and, and economic justice across the United States. And we're seeing that climate change just makes it all worse. It, it you know, with the global pandemic, um, you know, we can see health outcomes and the impact of climate change on, on health outcomes as well. So for me, my passion, my focus has been addressing climate change. And one of the things, Amy, that I know working with you and all of the, the sub-national entities, because we were in Paris and Marrakesh together talking about these issues, that we cannot rely on national governments alone um, to save the planet. Uh, you know, we're not going to meet um, the, the goals of the Paris Climate Accord of keeping warming to under 1.5 degrees Celsius without robust leadership from cities, from states, from uh, corporations, and from non-governmental organizations. I was like, I was absolutely thrilled when this opening uh, at TNC Massachusetts uh, came to my attention because the Nature Conservancy is this powerhouse of an organization on climate change. Um, the, you know, TNC at writ large is focusing on the world's biggest problems, you know, healthy water, healthy oceans, healthy land, and then of course that big focus on climate change, mitigation, and adaptation. And what, what I have found is so powerful about the Nature Conservancy, and this is something I saw when I was secretary at, of the Agency of Natural Resources in Vermont, is TNC looks to solve these global problems at a local scale. So they're thinking globally, they're developing uh, action-oriented science, thinking at large scales, landscape scales, but then it's driving action on the ground in our communities. And as you know, you know, the IPCC came out with a report on, on the contribution of lands to solving climate change. And, and they, the IPCC was very, very serious that we are not gonna reach our goals of Paris without land being in the mix, both as sequestration and also at, uh, at reducing emissions. So um, I was really excited to join the Massachusetts team. Massachusetts itself is also in a really sweet spot when it comes to thinking globally and acting locally on climate change. Um, you, you know, I'm sure you've worked with the Baker administration 
they're, they're, uh, uh, it's a Republican administration that is leading the charge on addressing climate change. Uh, the Global Warming Solutions Act was passed along with a Democratic legislature that, uh, that uh, commits the state to achieving very, very ambitious um, greenhouse gas reduction goals. And the Nature Conservancy has a really long and close relationship with the administration. So we've been able to embed our science in the decision making all along the way. And, and, um, and that's really exciting. We, we've gotten a lot done with them. That's great. Well, first of all, I'm thrilled that uh, TNC uh, hired you and they picked the best person and the right person for this you. job and that you have such a great partnership with the state of Massachusetts. They really do show their leadership um, on, on the ground and in their, in their thought leadership and their policy. And so they must be a great partner to work with. And Deb, can you talk a little bit more specifically about your climate mitigation and adaptation work in Massachusetts? Yeah, so, um, you know, there's some exciting things going on right now. Um, you know, Amazon, uh, the company, just announced a really significant grant to Massachusetts and some of uh, our partners in the Nature Conservancy to, uh, to demonstrate the power of forests to help us address climate change. So when, you know, the, the way um, at the Nature Conservancy, uh, our, our sweet spot is nature-based solutions. Like how do we take the power of nature to help us protect the planet? right, to stop climate change, to be, build resilience to climate change. And, um, and, you know, it's all informed by this really powerful uh, science and, and, uh, and innovation across the world that, you know, that we bring to play in our, in, in our own states. And um, one of the things we know is that just through, through protecting forests alone and, and managing forests for carbon, um, we can make a tremendous difference on climate change. So, for example, in, uh, in Massachusetts, climate, you know, thinking about, you know, how we manage forests, how we manage our uh, natural and working lands for carbon, uh, wetlands, agriculture, grasslands, uh, all of that as a whole can remove an additional 1.2 million metric tons or more of carbon from the atmosphere. That's about the same as emissions from about 450,000 vehicles annually. That's from natural climate solutions, just thinking about carbon. So we've got this great carbon forest project that we're moving ahead on. Um, and then we also think about nature-based solutions with communities. How do we, how do we um, deploy natural systems to help communities build resilience? And, um, you know, for example, constructed wetlands can, uh, and strategically managed parks can protect uh, a community from sea level rise or from flooding. And you may know that, uh, that on the East Coast, uh, our water is warming faster than almost the rest of the world. The Gulf of Maine is, is uh, warming uh, at three times faster than any other part of the ocean in the world. And we're, we have increased sea level rise. So uh, already in Massachusetts, sea level rise is, is uh, upward of 10 inches, which is significant. And so what we're, our innovations will be uh, replicable really around the world as we see these similar kinds of challenges. So, you know, restoration of cranberry bogs, putting in urban trees to manage heat. I know that, you know, that's pretty uh, well established as a way to um, bring the benefits of nature even into our cities. Um, restoring uh, marshlands and, and dunes to reduce coastal erosion. But back to this whole theory of working with the administration to embed our science and decisions. Um, one of the exciting things that the Massachusetts Nature Conservancy did was worked with the Baker administration to start a program they called the MVP program, the M Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. So it's using FEMA dollars, using hazard mitigation funds. It's helping communities look locally to say, okay, what is their biggest risk? And how can we 
use nature to help address those risks. And when we do include nature in the fight against climate change, we're also getting other benefits. Um, you know, we're creating green spaces that improve our mental and physical health. Um, it creates opportunities for recreation and tourism, and it creates jobs also, much more than thinking about this all with hardened infrastructure, you know, cement and and steel. Uh, you know, that's an infusion of cash, and um, but the green infrastructure really creates jobs. Uh, I think that's a wonderful description of the, all the co-benefits of the natural, the, the natural lands approach to dealing with climate change and adaptation. And, uh, and I'm glad to hear that the cooperation with Massachusetts continues on that uh, level too. That's exciting. So Deb, with your long and storied career as a practitioner <laughs> in the field of environment and climate change, what gives you hope um, during this, this somewhat traumatic time in our lives where we have so many crises that we're, we're trying to handle at one time. Yeah, I have to say, um, I have tremendous hope right now. And, and in part, it's because with all of the crises we're facing, we're seeing an unprecedented moment of altruism, right? We, ha we know now, we can't deny it, that we are connected globally, that what happens in China or Italy or Iran makes a difference here in the United States in our own you know, backyards. Um, it's undeniable when we think about uh, structural racism, that it, it impacts people, you know, that, that we have uh, real challenges across the country that we need to, uh, to address in order to, to really have uh, the, the society that we've been striving for. And climate change is just another layer to that. Uh, what, what, I'm, what I feel optimistic about is I, this is the first time in my life that we as a society are all making personal sacrifices for the common good in a way that, you know, during wartime that's happened, but, but then there's been like an enemy in sides. In this case, there we have a common enemy and that's, you know, that's this virus. And it also um, links us to thinking about science and the importance of science in helping us uh, find the way forward in solving these global problems. So I, I really believe that we are gonna be changed coming out of the pandemic, coming out of this time of, of, uh, of racial uh, division and strife, that we are gonna be changed and that, that we'll, co we'll come out with a commitment and an understanding that things have to go forward differently, that we have to engage with each other differently. And, uh, and, and that leaves us a, a, a tremendous opportunity to make real bold advancements on addressing climate change. So I'm excited. There's a lot of creative work happening. I know even in Massachusetts, as we're working from our homes, uh, our staff are so committed, they're so mission driven, that the work is continuing. So all over the world, the work's continuing. And we're seeing examples of when we live differently, all of a sudden we can breathe the air, we can see the stars, we can, you know, greenhouse gases go down and we're okay. Like we don't have to drive our own cars everywhere. There's other ways to live in the planet. So I think, um, you know, this is, a diff this is no doubt a tough time uh, for all of us and, and more so for some Americans than others, right? And we see this big divide, but it is the platform for transformation in our society. And I'm very excited about that. I, that, that gives me hope too. And I love the fact that you focused on a little bit at the end there on the transformation of our society in terms of how fast that happens if we want it to you know, structural changes happening in our institutions to deal with the new normal and uh, how they can be implemented fast if there is the political and the social will to do so. Absolutely. So I share your optimism. And uh, in this new wonderful future, I look forward to us connecting in person one day again. I really look forward to continuing our work together. And thank you so much for having me. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been great seeing you again and talking with you. Take care, Doug. Thank you. Bye.